Hello and welcome to my weekly video vlog and today I'm going to talk about menopause, intimacy issues, vaginal dryness, low libido and more. If you like my tips and advice then please subscribe and remember to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of all my new videos. Low libido, loss of libido, it's such a common symptom in the perimenopause and the menopause. It can be a, a big issue as far as relationships go. It can cause a lot of dis distress. Partners can think that you don't love them anymore because you don't want to be intimate anymore. Um, but for some women, and I know some of you tell me, you couldn't care less. You just think, I'm never having sex again and I don't care. But for others, it can cause a lot of general distress. So the main reason for this is falling oestrogen. Oestrogen is our feel-good hormone. It's what gives us energy, it makes us feel sexy. And when that starts to drop, that will affect the way we feel sexually and the way we respond sexually as well. But just remember, there are other issues too. You know, you can be really fatigued if you're really busy, if you haven't had a decent night's sleep for ages, if you are working hard, you've got family at home, maybe you're looking elderly parents. Um, at that particular point, it may well be that you just can't be bothered because you're too tired and there's no other particular reason. So we need to look at this in, in, in different ways. If it's just fatigue and tiredness, then it's about taking care of yourself, looking after yourself, giving yourself that little bit of rest um, and relaxation. Talk to your partner. And again, we get a lot of men contacting us too, thinking that their partners don't love them anymore because sex is off the menu. And they don't really know what's going on. So this is a good one. Talk to your partner if you can. And I know for some women talking about sex with their partners can still be um, quite difficult. But if they understand what's happening, then it's going to make it a bit easier for them to understand what you are going on as well. You can look at things like plant oestrogens can be very helpful. They're very gentle and they can just help to increase um, libido that little bit. Maybe take a month or two to, to kick in. You also have herbs such as maca and ginseng that they're known to help increase uh, libido and desire that little bit more too. The other things that can happen is we have a hormone called oxytocin and oxytocin, it's our almost like our love hormone, if you like. When you first fall in love, your body is swamped with it. When you give birth, your body is swamped with it. So it, it's a bonding hormone. It, and especially after giving birth, it helps you to bond with your baby. And if you fall in love, it helps you to bond with your partner. But as oestrogen falls, there seems to be some direct link between the levels of oestrogen and the levels of oxytocin. So your, your connection, your love your emotional feelings for your partner can decrease too and, and some women have told me that they wake up one morning and just decide that they don't actually fancy their partner anymore and obviously that's going to have a big impact on any kind of intimacy or, or sex life so just be aware that that can be quite a big issue too. It can be vaginal dryness and this um again, is such a common uh, issue. If you're getting vaginal dryness, that's going to cause pain uh, and discomfort during sex. So you're looking at things like sea buckthorn oil, make sure you're drinking plenty of water. You can also get um, natural lubricants. You need to be really careful here because some lubricants that you can get over the counter they're full of chemicals and they can actually irritate the, the vagina. So your vagina can get much more sensitive to, to anything like that. So just be careful and maybe try um, natural ones to, to start with. Vaginal dryness, you can also be more prone to infections such as thrush. Um, you can also be more prone to cystitis. You know, we all know about honeymoon cystitis, but there can also be um, menopause cystitis as well, which is caused by sex. 
um, and you end up getting um, reoccurrent bladder infections. So, and the other thing that can happen too is low estrogen. When it falls, estrogen in the vaginal area helps to produce the vaginal mucus, which keeps everything well lubricated. So again, when your estrogen falls, the actual production of mucus can decrease and that can be a big factor for the vaginal dryness as well. What a lot of women tell me too is that the consistency of the mucus, the colour and the smell can change too. And, and again, it, it's that being embarrassed, you know, if you think you're, you're smelling vaginally that little bit more or everything's a completely different colour. These are natural, it's a, it's a natural change. However, if there's a really strong smell, if there's a really complete different change of colour, if you're getting um, irritation, itchiness, it could be something like thrush, and in which case, just check, get that checked out by your doctor to get that treated if need be. For the vaginal dryness, if you're getting any kind of um, regular infections, e even the cystitis, then go for a vaginal probiotic. It can be really helpful um, in this particular situation. Other issue can be painful sex. And again, you only need to have painful sex once and that's you, uh, you know, completely put off it. So again, in this situation, what can happen here? It, if you think about it, the vaginal wall tissue, it's probably the stretchiest tissue in the whole of our body. If you think about it, it's got to stretch big enough um, to allow you to, to give birth to a baby. So you, the vagina tissue, it needs to be moist. It needs to be very flexible in, in, in order for this to happen. But if you start to get vaginal dryness, that can then also affect the vaginal tissue itself. So it becomes thinner. It can become easily irritated. It can tear during sex. And that's very often if you end up getting a, a little bit of bleeding straight after, after sex. Um, it becomes less flexible. And obviously that's going to cause a, a lot of discomfort when you have sex. Other thing too is there's something called a prolapse. So what can happen is that the pelvic girdle muscles, so these are the muscles that they're like a big sling um, at the lower end of, of the, the, this particular part of the body. And they hold up your bowel, your bladder and the, the uterus. If these muscles decrease, if, if they get weaker, if they sag, then either your bowel, your bladder or the uterus can shift position. It can also pull the vagina slightly out of place as well. And obviously, if you've got something like your bladder or your bowel pressing on the vagina or the vagina is slightly misplaced, that is going to cause a lot of discomfort during sex as well. So if you find that there's a really severe pain when having sex, or you find that there's a big drag, you're getting a sort of dragging feeling the whole time, or when you sit down, everything feels really uncomfortable. It's important to get this checked out by your doctor, just to make sure that there isn't um, a, a prolapse. And obviously that may need treated in, in some way. So with this particular situation, this is where learning to do pelvic floor exercises before you reach the perimenopause and menopause is so important because with the prolapse, it's a very difficult one to sort. Um, and we know all these issues with, with um, pelvic mesh that, that's been used over the years to, to try and sort this, which has had terrible um, re repercussions. So getting your pelvic floor muscles kept really tight and strong is going to prevent this happening in the perimenopause and postmenopause as well. One thing to be really, or several things to be really important here. If you have an active sex life, if you're still enjoying a sex life, be aware that you're not safe from pregnancy until you've not had any periods for two years. So if you don't want a surprise menopause baby, then you still need to use precautions of some kind. Um, that's really Im important. The other thing is, um, which is a really interesting set of statistics, 
is that sexually transmitted diseases in the over 50s and 60s and 70s is increasing in the UK. So you need to be very careful about that. But also it's a nice indication in a way, not the actual, you know, getting sexual um, diseases, but the fact that a lot of women over the age of 50, 60 and 70 are still enjoying an active sex life. So when you're in the menopause and perimenopause and your libido has gone out the window, it doesn't necessarily mean it's gone for good. And a lot of women do tell me that they feel um, much happier afterwards. They've got less body um, issues with, with, with body image when they're post-menopause. They have a really good active sex life. They are enjoying themselves. So please bear that in mind. Hope you found this one helpful. It is, as I said before, it, it, it's a huge issue. It can be really distressing for both um, partners um, in this situation. If any of you have had any issues with this, what have you done to help yourself? And as I say, this is one where there will be a lot of women wanting tips and help and advice. So please give, you, uh, give me all your really helpful stories. Um, and I will see you later and have a lovely week.